Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry, the original creator of the Folk Art One Stroke Painting Technique. I'm in the Let's Paint studio to paint May's Wreath of the Month. In this program, we're using birch plywood surfaces. This is an oval that can go vertical or horizontal, and it's great to paint on, so you're gonna have fun using this surface. Then, I'm gonna teach you how to paint a bright, pretty background, and then the scruffy, a moss wreath into an oval, and then we're gonna learn three different daisies. So come join me in the studio and let's paint. I so enjoyed painting this wreath, and I wanna thank you guys for coming to our studio and painting it with me. Now what you're gonna see with this wreath is we have a light, fun background that I'm gonna show you how to do. Then this wreath is gonna be pounced with a scruffy, and it's gonna have all these pretty yummy colors in it. See how I added the happy green and the sap green? And so I put a base of that down, and then a quick and easy way to lay out this wreath so it's it's going to be like lavender skinny little daisies pink little small daisies and we're going to start with the big white fun daisies that i'm going to teach you lots of different how to's on how to do those larger white daisies okay before we do those beautiful daisies let's go do our background so the first thing I'm gonna do is look at our great wreath. This wreath can go this way or this way. I chose this way because I like that big oval. And you can hang it with ribbon like we did or wire or whatever, but this is a nice piece of birch plywood that's been cut out with pretty um, scalloped edges. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna pick um, a folk art multi-surface paint that is a neutral color just for a base so that it will seal the wood. It's got a little bit of a sealer in it, which makes it really nice. So you're gonna base coat a nice coat on here. And then what's gonna happen is that when it totally dries, it raises the green a little bit. And so you're gonna fill that and you're gonna to wanna to take some sandpaper or, or a sandy sponge and you're just gonna go around and sand off those little nubs that you might fill from the raised grain, and then you're gonna wipe off the dust and be ready for you to put a second coat. And when you put that second coat, it seals it really beautifully and you're ready to paint. So I already have one ready right here for us so we can just flip this over and it's all nice and ready for this fun background. And I say fun a lot because I enjoy it and I think you will too, creating different looks and different backgrounds instead of a solid color. And so with this one, I used some happy green and some wicker white. So I'm gonna take the dampen three quarter inch flat brush, lay it on a paper towel for the water to run out. I'm gonna split my brush right here in my double loader. So I'm picking up two colors at one time. And this big three quarter brush is going to go back and forth layering the color over each other and I want to see white, I want to see light green, I want to see happy green. So you're going to see all kinds of shades in there. Now if this is too bright for you, see that's a little bright, I can go back and get some more and sometimes even more white. Okay, so it's slip slap, more like layering with the double colors on our brush at the same time. I'm gonna lay this down. I just wanted y'all to see that a couple of times so you feel I'm sweeping it a little bit more and just doing layer on top of layer, but I see movement. I like seeing movement in the strokes. All right, and you're really gonna see this middle. All right. So just keep double loading that and coming in here and it's going to work really nice. It's going to go on so nice because it has that great base coat already on it. I'm going to put a nice base coated edge around this wreath. It's, uh, it's raw right now, but I don't want to get it on the table right now. But don't forget that's that finishing touch to get it all done at the end. 
all in here in this area. I don't have to worry about it too, too much because it's going to have the wreath itself. But where you do see it in here, just concentrate on it inside the oval. Concentrate on it getting the look that we want. See that? The white mixed in with the happy green. So I come around about four fingers all the way around with my scruffy for the wreath. Okay, so now we're going to get our wreath in, uh, paint it all in, get it all laid out so that we're ready to put our, our different colored daisies on top of it. So this is May showers, think about that. All the pretty little daisies popping up. Now I used these two colors. We're, we're gonna have our scruffy brush and we're gonna fluff that scruffy if you first time you used your scruffy, make sure you fluff it. It's dry, we don't want it wet when we're starting because we're gonna load a dry brush. And listen, we're pouncing and that's exactly, and we're gonna pounce the other color. We're gonna exactly pounce that much as we're going around. Now this is like an egg and you crack the egg in half. So it's not round, it's oval. So when I say, half one color, half the other. It's not the length of, the, it's not this side and this side, it's the upper and the lower part, all right? So I'm gonna come around, and remember I said I want about four fingers. So I'm going to come around, get the paint off me there. I'm gonna come around and decide what I want that look to be. I'm gonna put a lot more dark but it needs some of that light in there. And I didn't go all the way to the edge. Can y'all see? I'm just almost, almost to the edge. And keep your four fingers there so that you have the right amount of space inside left and enough space that will make it look like a wreath for you to put all your daisies on, okay? So around, all the way around. And now what's gonna happen is you're gonna continue as you come around picking up more paint. So I just want you to see again, I keep pouncing and pouncing, mostly the dark sap green. Okay, now I've let this totally dry. I've divided this up so I can show you in stages what we're doing. But I divided this into four sections, knowing I had three colors. So as we were looking at this, we decided, you know what? If you put these white in these four spots, then we have a pink here and a pink here, a purple and a purple, and it works out perfect. So actually, we split it in half and said white, pink, or white, purple, white, pink, white. All right, so whatever makes it easier for you. That's how we laid it out. Now, I'm gonna teach you first, I'm gonna move this around so I can work on these daisies right here to show you how easy they are. And what makes it even easier is I have a guide here for you. Now, when you're looking at these guides, I want you to see that you're gonna see more color when it's on a surface, but we were trying to show you how you can practice right on here and get those strokes. What I like to do is do a clock and that helps everybody be able to see their daisy easily. So what we're gonna do is I do 12, three, six, and nine, and then I fill in. So I want you to practice on here that stroke. And some of the strokes curve one way, some of the strokes curve the other way. So see these curve up and then these cu curve up. And these are a little bit different than the other daisies we're gonna be learning. So I wanna work right on this sheet and you're gonna see that it really helps you. All right, now on glass or on this wood, you're gonna love, cause it's on a dark surface here, glass shows these little daisies so good cause it even shows the little grooves like daisies have. All right, so I'm gonna take our 12 flat that's been dampened, laid on the paper towel, and ready to pick up. And see, I'm not dipping in the white, I'm coming on the outside of that puddle of paint. 
then I'm gonna come right here and you're gonna practice. All right, so you go right here and touch, lean, and lift. Now I want you to practice that stroke and also touch, curve, touch, lean, and curve, and curve, okay? So that's gonna make doing those daisy strokes very simple for you. Then you wipe it off and you're ready to start your practicing. I mean, you're ready to start your painting, but you do need to practice, it'll help you. All right, so let's, let's go over here and do our first daisy. Now I'm, at, I'm gonna grab my white and come right here on my first daisy. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit heavier than my normal, those little daisies that we've done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and here and what, what's happening is that you have to lift so it's light in the middle. So there's 12, three, six, and nine. So I'm trying to make them all the same length and that will help you, all right? So now all I'm doing is doing one, touch, lean, lift, two, in between each one. Push down and lift push down and lift. And you see the streaks in there? It makes it look like a real daisy. All right. So you see I can go in and out. It's, it actually makes it more realistic when they're not all exactly the same petal. Okay, so he's a really big one. So we would do some small ones around. So I'm gonna come up here and do a piece of one where I put the dot for the center. And these are just a little bud where you're just pulling it in to that one spot. And then we'll do a couple smaller ones. So I put different sizes here, but I need a triangle, right? So you can come here, put a little dot to help you do this and get your clock in there first. And remember, these are a little bit thicker petals than all the rest of the petals you're gonna be doing. I also like to show you another little fun one that you can take and you do your three, nine, and 12 parts of the clock, okay? It doesn't matter which way you head it because of whichever way you're facing yours. Then I do a little short one right here. So then all of these, they're also gonna overlap. Do you see that? Then these along the bottom, if you make them go from there to there, then this little daisy looks like it's turned a little bit. So when I put the center in it, that's gonna make sense to you. Another little one here. See, if I go all the way around, I can just start here and work all the way around, but sometimes people like get carried away and put like 20 petals in there. So let's, let's do our clock until you feel really comfortable and then you're just filling them in, in between. Okay, so there you go. Now I look at it, I can spill, I think that's pretty good. You can put your hand there to see. Yeah, I filled it in. All right, I did do some trailing ones on this one and this one. So let me show you. They kind of had one, one, two, one, two, three. But I don't think you can see it very well in that color. But we can do some with some of the other colors that we're gonna be doing so you can see how that works. All right, so next thing that happens is I'm gonna put this to the side and show you how I bring in the other daisies. Okay, so this side's done and now I'm gonna just concentrate on this side. And I wouldn't just put pink up here, I would do the reverse, all right? So let's do some purple up here. And we're gonna go here using the Wicker White and the Doxazine Purple. And I actually used an eight flat to do this one. And then I have these little trailing daisy petals. And I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna go between, well, remember when, I don't know if you remember if you painted with me before, but if I have a dark color and it's smaller than a 12 flat brush, I pick up the main color, which is purple, the doxazine purple, and then I side stroke the white 
so I can just dip right here and work this in. I'd rather you side stroke it, but you can do the same thing just like this, back and forth. And every time you come back to this brush, to your palette, you're just gonna dip white, flatten it, and you'll be ready. All right, so then I can lay my brush right there and see if I've got that color like I want it. And then I can practice touch and then pull. So I'm not pushing down. I'm touching and pulling, touch, pull, touch, pull. So they're gonna be little teeny daisy petal, I mean little teeny daisies with little teeny little petals, which I really like. They're, I think these petals are a little bit longer than the pink ones, but they're basically the same type of stroke. Then when we get ready to do the bud, we're gonna touch and tilt on the chisel. So see that, I'm touching and pulling but I'm not really pushing down very much. So I did a back layer. See, I'm doing white and purple. But then look what happens. I picked up just white, and then I can put a layer right on top. Watch this. Little layer, little layer, right on top. And it looks like paint, uh, painted petals in the back and some in the front. Okay? So I'm going to wipe this off. And then we're ready. Just take a little bit of water or baby wipes and wipe off your paint because we don't want it to dry on there. And we'll do our next strokes. All right. So here they are. I made them a little bit bigger. But I want you to see what happens first. I put the darker purple ones underneath. So when we're working on here, let me show you. I want it to have some depth, a little bit more depth. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do my clock again, where I do the 12, three, six, and nine. And then I'm going to go around here and fill these in. Now let me tell you how I get the darker purple. The darker purple is when you lead with the white edge. The white edge goes first. So there's the white. I touch and pull the white to the middle. So I'm leading with that lighter edge. It goes towards my center. And then I'm going to do a triangle. So one, two, I'm going to put one, one here and one there. And those are going to be the underneath petals, underneath flowers, so that when we put, we flip the brush and put the white ones on top, they're going to give you the lightness like the sun's hitting them. So look, I'm pulling. And I got too light there, so let me get more purple. All the way, dioxazine purple, wicker white. And then there's another one here. So I'm going all the way around like this, or do your clock, because the clock helps you lay it out. So if this is the six, and this is the three, you just know how many go in between. All right? Now, I also use this to trail one, two, three, four, five, six, and just pull a little trailing flower um, daisies from the side. I can also come here and do a little bit of a bud that's opening over there. All right, so let's do, I'm gonna fill all in with these bright lavender looking ones, which all that means is that the purple's going first. The doxazine purple heads in first. And then I'm just filling in all these little skinny lavender. And they're lavender because I've used doxazine purple and wicker white. Okay, so I'm gonna be pulling all of these little, pretty little petals and overlapping the dark, so the dark's kind of underneath. This one I want you to see that I'm pulling out so I have plenty of room on the inside for putting the inside of the daisy pretty center, okay? So I'm going in between there and little 
tight, skinny ones. All the way around. Okay. Now that looks like it's straight. So one of the things I did was come here and add a few little pieces because I don't want it to look like a row. I want it to kind of blend in. A few little ones so it doesn't take away from the shape of the wreath that I'm doing. A few, like I did, I showed you a couple of little buds. And I'm just going to finish off by putting a darker purple one over here. Okay, so next we're going to do our pink. So let's grab this pink and white and work it in. And I am using a 12 or a 10 or an 8. You can make them any size you want, so think about that. All right, so what I'm going to do first is our clock. So I'm leading with the white, and then I'm filling in just in between each one, and then you get a consistent look. All right, so I didn't have a lot of room there, so I put a couple of larger ones, and then I'm going to go to a smaller brush and add a lot of smaller ones. So this is kind of the same flower, it's just we've got a as the purple, but we have a pink and we have a purple in our garden. How's that sound? We got some of each. I am going to go back to the smaller brush. So that's the eight. And I'm just going to remember I'm pulling some with the white. And then I'm going to flip the brush and pull some with the pink first. This is bright pink and worker white. So here's my 12, 3, 9, 6, and just fill in between. And it looks really good. Just remember, it looks good to overlap the other daisies. So it looks like it's more natural. And then what's going to make them each look different is I'm going to put pretty centers that are different inside. So get comfortable with that pulling, pressure pull, pressure pull. And I came in here still pulling the pink, but when I do the trailing ones, you want the pink to come last because it's going to give you color out on that light center. All right. So I'm going to get white and pink and just trail a little bit. See how pretty that is? A little bit of pink there. All right, so now let's go to our centers. And one simple center is what I'm going to do on the yellow, uh, yellow on the pink. All right, and what I did on those is I did the simplest one I do is where I just do a dip dot. So I dip, dot, you might can do two, right in the center. And I did three, but look, the third one gets too small. So dip dot dot you can also do some of the trailing the trailing little blossoms and put some in there if you would like or not i put some in here because that's kind of underneath that flower and this is right where the hole is so i'm going to kind of take that out a little bit so what i would do is come in here like it's coming from there And I just did something wrong. See, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I stand it up. I did that just to show you what you should be doing, <laughs> not do. <laughs> OK, there you go. All right, so now what I like doing on some of them, too, is to take my smaller brush 
And so I'm going to take the small, one of the little ones like the script liners, and on the purples, let me move over here, I'm going to do multiple dots, okay? So I'm going to go, look, one, two, three, four, five, they get all kinds of sizes in there. But I do need to come back in with, you can go about three, four dots, one, two, three, and then go pick up. I tried five, that doesn't work, right? Are you counting with me? <laughs> but look how nice and different that makes that look. Looks like a different one, a different daisy. Because I said basically it's the same daisy, just a different color, but sometimes just the centers can make the difference. All right. You can paint daisies on a lot of fun projects, and I like to do greeting cards with these flowers you guys are learning with my wreaths of the month and flowers of the month. Now see, that's messy. So I go back and dot them. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me move on to the white daisies and I'm gonna use the little quarter inch scruffy and this dry, it's gotta be dry, it's gotta be fluffed. I make sure I fluff it and we're not using water on this to paint with. Now you do have to use water to clean it but we're not gonna use water um, in our painting using it. I want you to hear this, I'm tapping and then I come over and tap one edge into the bright moon yellow. It's moon yellow and yellow ochre. I'm gonna keep the um, yellow ochre on the bottom and the moon yellows on the top. But I want you to see, I'm just gonna get this in there and it's a little bump, kind of like a gumdrop at the top. You see that? And it's got some bright yellow. I need to get more bright yellow. And the darker on the bottom, are you with me? Because what's going to happen is we're going to do some, some more color in here to make it pop. All right, so I might come in this one and turn my brush around. But now what I need in this to make it glow is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pounce some little bit of wicker white on the moon yellow. Now look what happens. I'm going to tap it and it gives it a glow on the top. Do you see that? Just a little tap. No, I'm out of it. Put some more. First time I did that, I went, oh, that makes a whole difference of that center. Okay, so see, it just kind of brings it alive. Then I'm going to take my one script liner all right, and so it's the short one. And what I'm doing with this is I'm going to dot the citrus and the sap green, the happy green and the sap green. Happy green and sap green. So I'm gonna go around and just dot this. I can steady my finger or I can just come around and dot just part way around. Let me do one more so you can see. Now this one, I'm not worried about it being perfect little dots but I do want the, dark, the sap green to be perfect little dots. So I've got to go into the thick paint. And so if it's starting to dry, that's not good. So don't use it if it's a little dry. Now it shows you how to do this totally on the dots right here. It shows you how I dotted the happy and then I came back up a little dark green dots. So look how, so that looks okay. That looks better, but look at that. So that's the fun of it. You, at any point you can say, okay, I'm done. But look how much difference it makes. Okay, now to finish our project, I want you to see how fun it is to do these little teeny leaves because what they're gonna do, you can use an eight and a six. I, I use both throughout here. I'm gonna do the two script liner. I'm gonna have some little bit of water in the two script liner with the sap green little teeny 
inky little vines. And on those little vines, they're all kind of making, look, watch this, little curly cues and stems. So what's happening, I keep going into that inky, inky palette, some curls, some curly cues. I love doing these. And the little bits of leaves are gonna go right on these. Okay, now all I'm doing in between the flowers are putting little leaves. But these are these guys right here. So I've used this and this uh, liner for that. But then I came in and remember I was telling you if we used all dark green and then side load the second color with the eight. So the eight's got all sap green, a little bit of happy green, and you're ready to go. So every once in a while I might come get happy um, the sap green if it's not dark enough. So I'm gonna do one little tip and we practice that right on here. You're gonna push down and cover my entire stroke, always starting at the tip and then working down, but I'm coming right off that stem, all right? And this is a small version, then we make them larger also. So what I'm doing is I can stagger the vine where they're back and forth and sometimes you can do them where they're all dark green and they're right across from each other. Depends on what look you want. Do you see that? All right. And then I'm gonna use a little bit bigger brush, either the 10 or the 12. And I came in here. Now I want to make these a little bit lighter especially in the purple, look how it works in there. And I'm just going around, same color on the brush and hitting different areas with that light green. And then I come back with dark green. All right, and so when I said dark green, it's sap green and happy green together. So this, was, uh, this is uh, 12 that I'm working here. But then I like to take the little brush and it looks really good. If you've done some of the other wreaths with me, I took this little brush and just brought, this is a little six, and just put sap green and put some dark sap green here and there. And it gives it just a little bit of twist. See how fun? So let's go look at the finished piece again because I want you to see that as we're making those daisies, even without patterns, that's what I think you're gonna love, without patterns, you're gonna go through there and put the leaves and on. I think it looks good that it's not exact, exact, and you're filling in a pattern, that you're just enjoying it and you're loosely stroking. Look at the leaves and the little curls. And it looks just like nature, it just looks natural. And that is a fun project. Painting daisies is always so much fun. I want to thank you for coming to class today, and I want to encourage you to go practice. I also want to share with you that you can go on platonline.com and check out these great wreath surfaces. You can also pick up the Wreath of the Month kit if you haven't done that yet. And then go join Let's Paint with Plaid's Facebook group where you can share great pictures of what you've painted with me each month. Until next month, I'm going to be excited to come back and paint with you. We're going to paint another Wreath of the Month lesson.